Hey everyone, uh, hope you were doing well. We're doing well out here in Virginia. We're doing pretty great. We're starting to get into that part of the season which, I don't know, you get the leaves crunching under your feet, the spookiness in the air, you know, the Halloween direct decorations come out. You just get the feel like the world is a little bit more ominous, you know? Wait, there's a skeleton behind me? Don't, don't tell me about it. I, I really don't want to know. Anyway, uh, you may be wondering why I posted a video that simply says review or book review or, or something like that. I'm going to tell you. So you don't have to you know, wait too long to find out. One of my favorite guests that I've ever had here on the show on, on, all, things, on all things writing is uh, Mr. Ronald Melfi. He's one of my favorite authors and uh, quite simply, I, I mean, I love the guy, and I'm a huge fan of his work. And uh, it's one of the reasons that I'm, well, one of the reasons that I'm such a huge fan is because every time I read one of his novels, I learn something that I emulate, uh, something that I take into my own kit bag, uh, tools, things I, I learn that I can, uh, uh, you know, use for my own writing. And I mean, I learn more about him as an author, but I learn a little bit more about myself in the process. So granted, I'm by no means caught up on his books. You know, I, I read other books. People send me books to read for reviews on the show and whatnot. Anyway, not caught up getting there. But I want to talk to you about a book I read recently. This book here. It's called December Park. Uh, literally, it says it on the title. Anyway, uh, so what did I love about this book? What did I what did I love about it? Honestly, there's kind of a youthfulness to this book. Um, I was really really glad to see that. Yes, it's horror, and it'll it'll get your spine tingling a little bit because you know, the Piper's gonna get you. You have to read the book to find out what I'm talking about. But I really love the tone of the book. I was personally brought back to my childhood and all the things me and my squirrely friends used to do growing up. Every town has that one legend, you know. And in December Park, we see that legend sort of coming to life, so to speak. And ultimately, this legend, just like the legends in the towns that we grew up with, proved to be something entirely different than what, what we think we are and what really anyone can expect. Ronald's storytelling, storytelling is very evocative and the story jumps off that page at you. Angelo, who's, who's the, the, uh, the voice of the book, also the, the protagonist, and his friends, even, even their weird friend Adrian, they become real to you somehow, very, very real. Uh, by the way, in the end, you come to find out that Adrian is, um, uh, he's a, you see him in a bit of a different light towards the end of the book. Uh, lest you think I'm being mean to poor Adrian, I'm not. Uh, Adrian's story felt very rich and relatable to me because we all know somebody like that. It's very similar in many ways to the way you find out about your friends as you grow up and you find out more about their histories and their backgrounds and sort of how that feeds into who they've become in, in real life. This is, it's the sort of book where, it, I, I, I hesitate to use the phrase coming of age, but it really is. It, this is the sort of book where you see Angelo grow up and he's moving out of the trappings of being a kid and into more of a um, more more into the world at large. He's he's smarter. He's different. He's changed by the end of the book. In the end, we we know instinctively that nothing is going to be the same for him. And I love this ending for for Malfi because um, well, you just have to read the book, but. It's true that I think all of us have that moment in our lives where we look back and we know that nothing's really ever going to be the same ever again. We get that last glimpse of our own childhoods uh, through that one moment where you can actually, if you think back, you can, you can find that one moment in your own life. 
It's that moment that in the book we see Angelo saying goodbye to his, his kingdom, and we know the world is changing. I thought it was great to see this glimpse into uh, what Ronald mentions at the end is really sort of a glimpse into his own, uh, his own history, his own, um, his own life growing up. The main character, Angelo, is the son of a police detective, and, um, and he sees something he's really not supposed to see, something he definitely shouldn't have seen, which leads him on this chase for the Piper, like I mentioned, the Piper. It's a serial killer which has sort of taken on mythical proportions, especially in the minds of the child. I know when I was growing up, there was a white house on the next block over that I always sat abandoned. And we had all kinds of stories about a ghost that lived in there that if you sat on the first floor and you uh, you said certain things, the ghost would come get you anyway. I think every town has some myths like that. Um, he meets this Adrian who shows up new to the block. And Adrian becomes obsessed with the Piper, with finding the Piper. You get the feeling that Adrian has never had friends like Angelo and, uh, and, and his merry band of misfits. He fits into this strange clique in kind of an unusual way, fills it sort of this unusual role. He becomes very integral to that storyline. So without, without Adrian in his spot... Uh, honestly, I, I don't know that this, this story would work as well as it does. It, it does this novel. It's just so great the way it's written. He's critical to revealing who the Piper is, what the Piper is, and, um, and ultimately finding him. In the end, I found myself uh, thinking about, you know, pining for my old Huffy with the, the, the cards and the spokes, you know, uh, Back then, we stayed out until the porch light came on at night, and you know we heard our mom scream for us from the porch. And oftentimes, that that scream for us was uh, echoed by the other moms on the neighborhood until we found the mom whose house we were at, and then we would call home and go home. And you know, it was just it was a whole thing, it was all process, a thing that kids today just don't understand. So I really very much enjoyed this book. Um, so, I am but a humble spinner of wine. Uh, I'm but a humble spinner of yarns. I'm but a modest podcaster. But let me just say that uh, I very much enjoy the book December Park. Can highly recommend it if you're looking for a spooky read this holiday season. Uh, December Park's a great way to go. Um, yeah, I, I started reading it, and to be quite honest, I had a hard time putting it down. I was actually looking for excuses to go back to reading the book, um, which is interesting for me because, uh, you know, normally I can read a book and set it down. Over. No, this one I needed to consume, like, like honestly, like all of the rest of Malfi's books, to be quite honest. Uh, anyway, go grab a copy for yourself. Um and, 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 and see what I'm talking about. So thank you for tuning in. I really appreciate it. This is Brian the Writer. 